Well, hello, welcome back to Tail Three Cabins. Today I want to talk about routines. We start routines actually at birth. When we're born, we start with sleep, eat, and poop, repeat. And then as we get older, we get routines of getting up in the morning, driving traffic, go to work, driving traffic again, and come home. So everybody has routines, daily routines, weekly routines, and annual routines. Simple routines is uh, emptying a dishwasher. Maybe over the years you empty the dishwasher a certain way and then you hone that a little bit and make it improve upon the way you empty the dishwasher to try to save time and steps and opening the cupboards as little as possible. Maybe you could care less. But uh, to me, I always try to uh, improve on my routines as I get older. And the same thing with having a tractor. I have routines with the tractor. I've had this tractor now since 2018 and I pretty much accumulated a lot of implements and with those implements I have routines with them now. Pretty much an annual type of routine when it comes to uh, all the implements. And I specifically want to talk about the rear implements. The front is not that hard when it comes to changing out stuff in the front. So if I'm going from the bucket to the snow plow or if I'm going to the forks or the brush crusher, I can pretty much change those with very little effort and I can do it probably within a minute tops. So it's really easy to change that. But when you're talking about changing out the rear implements, it's a little bit more involved, and especially if you don't have a quick hitch on the back. The first two rear implements that I purchased with Tractor was the brush hog and then also the box blade. And I didn't feel I needed the, the quick hitch. They wanted to sell me that at John Deere. I think at the time it was like $400, and I just didn't think that was a purchase I needed to make necessarily because at the time I only had the two implements to worry about. But I will tell you, without having that quick hitch, it was pretty rough switching between the two. The next implement that I picked up then was a uh, carry-all. It was fairly cheap, and then that's what I used to haul around firewood. I modified it, put a nice little frame around it, so then I had three implements. Well, then I started thinking about getting the quick hitch from Harbor Freight. I think at the time it was $100, and with a coupon, I brought it down to right around 80 so it was kind of a no-brainer from all the reviews. It's a generic version. The only thing I had to do was change out the top hook to make that more adaptable to all of my implements, especially when it came to the tiller. But I just wanted to go over, uh, over the years how I've gotten a little bit smarter with my routine when it comes to the implements that go on the back of the tractor. Okay, so let's just start out in January, February, beginning of the year, beginning of my routine. It's winter time. There's not a lot of projects going on right now. I typically like to leave the backhoe on the back just because it gives me more traction with the wheels if it's icy out or snowy. So I typically like to have that on in January and February. At the beginning of the year though, I'm really only concerned about using the plow or the bucket off the front and I just need some ballast on the back. So any implement that I have will pretty much work for plow and snow. If the snow is pretty thick and heavy and I'm trying to go down the driveway with this plow, it's actually a little bit nicer to have a lighter implement on the back but I typically keep the backhoe on for most of the winter. All right, now we're getting into March and April and the weather's starting to break a little bit. I usually take the backhoe off and it's probably gonna be off most of the year now unless there's some weird project that I need it. But I'm trying to make the least amount of moves when it comes to putting my rear attachments on as possible throughout the year. So the next thing I usually put on is the box blade and I leave that on March and April because winter's breaking I still need a little bit of ballast on the back of the tractor. I can still maneuver and uh, do some snow plowing if I need to with this. I'm gonna need some driveway repair. Typically I need to repair the driveway up after a good hard winter. In March and April, once I get a little dry spell in there, I can take the box plate, go up and down the driveway and uh, repair that up. And I'll usually leave this on for about two months. After April, we're coming into the planting season. So I take off the box plate and I put on the tiller, and I usually have the tiller on for May and June. 
We always plant a garden in May. We use the tiller quite a bit. And then there might be a few little extra projects here that I will try to schedule while I have this tiller on. So maybe a project like when we added a little bit more space next to our garage, a little parking area for our RV, or I needed to touch up our driveway where uh, when the fire department wanted me to add a turnaround. Uh, I try to make sure I plan most of my tilling projects in that two month period when I have this on so I don't have to go switching back and forth. Again, I'm trying to make the least amount of moves with my implements as possible. That's not always the case. There might be something that always pops up throughout the year that's gonna change that, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But May and June is typically for the tiller. And then once June is over with, well, then we move over here. July and August, and maybe even September and October, the brush hog. I put the brush hog on in July. It's just when things are starting to get really rough around the edges on our property here. And uh, I'll take one swipe around and take care of everything. And then I probably don't need it again for another month or so into August as things grow again. And then I can take this down to Southern Ohio while I still have the brush hog on. Work down there, get some of the high areas, cut some of our hunting pads. We use this quite extensively down in Southern Ohio. Lately, when I take my tractor down to Southern Ohio, I try to do it in a manner where I'm not just gonna take it down there, turn around and bring it back in a, a couple days. I'm gonna take it down there, leave it down there for maybe a month or so, and uh, take care of everything I need to take care of in that period. So again, I'm not wasting uh, my time trying to hook it up to the trailer, disconnecting it from the trailer, unloading everything, loading everything. That's all pretty time consuming. If I can take care of everything down in Southern Ohio in a month or so and just leave the tractor down there, then I'm golden. So September and October is when we start uh, breaking trails down in Southern Ohio. The brush hog really comes in handy. It really speeds things up when it comes to clearing out the trails with a combination of using the brush crusher, the front end loader, just pushing things out of the way, clearing a little path, and then knocking down all the uh, thickets and, and weeds and everything with the brush hog. That's a great combination. I really haven't had a need to bring the tiller down there. I haven't really talked about putting any food plots or trying to do anything like that at this time. But having a brush hog on and keeping it on for those four months works out well for me. Also, it is good ballast when I need to move around our RV or something heavy. It's got a lot of ballast on the back. If I'm moving the RV around with like, and I have the box plate on the back, a lot of times that's not enough ballast. Um, you can feel the front end is kind of almost tipping a little bit. The tongue weight on our RV is close to 800 pounds, depending on what's loaded in there. It's supposed to be 752, but if you got a bunch of stuff in the storage container, maybe even add on some water in the water tanks, well then that tongue weight's probably close to 800 pounds and, and taxes the front end of our tractor. But this has enough ballast for me to do most of the stuff throughout the rest of the summer. So it's August now. I'm going to probably take the brush hog out and do one more time around the uh, yard and the, the thicket areas and up and down the driveway. You already saw me do that earlier in the year around the 4th of July. And then we're going to be taking this down to Southern Ohio. We're going to try to get those uh, hunting blinds up on top of the hill too. So I'll have the brush hog on the back. And I'll probably need to bring the forks down with me so we could try to haul as, many, as much of the blinds up on top of the hill as possible. And then we're going to assemble those up back into the woods. Hopefully it will all go well. This is something new. Never done it before up there. Never tried to haul anything that large or that uh, heavy. And we'll do a little bit of assistance with the UTV, but the tractor is definitely going to have to carry the brunt of these blinds up there. They'll be disassembled, of course, and we'll assemble them up on top of the hill. Basically, we're just making all the walls right now, and then we'll just put everything together once we get them up top. Have to level it out. We're going to leave them on the ground. There's going to be on a, one's going to be on a hillside a little bit, so it's not necessarily to raise it up or elevate it at all. And we'll just try to level it out with some cinder blocks, and then we're going to have to look at maybe um, holding it down just in case it gets windy but I don't think that'll be too much of an issue. I haven't decided yet if we're just gonna try to strap it to a tree or uh, try to stake it down to the ground a little bit, but we'll figure that out once we figure out a good placement for it. So now if we move on from the brush hog, typically we're looking at October, late October, November, December. And what I like to do is move firewood around at that time of year. So it's nice to take off the brush hog and put on my carryall on the back and use that with the front end loader to carry a bunch of firewood back and forth, whether it's filling up our wood pile on the porch or even down in Southern Ohio. Now we have a lot of wood down there to get rid of from when we knock trees down to put the new septic system in. 
there's, there's still uh, four good piles of wood down there that need to be cut up and we haven't even started burning any of the wood that we cut up from last year from the first pile that we took care of. So the carryall typically goes on towards the end of the year and stays on until I'm done with the wood area. And then uh, I put the backhoe back on for a while just because it's been sitting there. It's, it's leaked down, it's all in weird contortions and sometimes it's pretty hard to get it back on to the tractor. Just typically, that's the scenario for me, a routine through the year now where I try to do the least amount of changes possible and then take advantage of each implement as they're on for that period of time. Now, there are certainly times where this routine is not going to work fully because there's always little projects that come up. For instance, if I have to go to my daughter's house, she usually has a laundry list of items for me to do. And it actually requires me changing several rear implements while I'm there. So I have to figure out what did she want done, what's on the laundry list, and then what can I fit on my trailer. And a lot of times I will be changing the rear implements two or three times while I'm there in a two or three day period. Again, the front part is a piece of cake to change things in the front. But even if you have this quick hitch connection here, it still is a little bit difficult to, to get things lined up right, make sure things are leveled, hook them up, hook up the PTO if it's a PTO type of implement, and uh, level things out and try to get it just perfect. You might have to change the pitch of how this is angled if you're using the box plate on a driveway or even if you're using the brush hog here. So there's a lot of little tweaks here and there involved. But that's my routine for the year and I try to stick to it and I know it might get repetitious when it comes to the videos that I put out but it allows me to take full advantage of the implement that I have on in a period of time and I'm not playing musical chairs with which implement I'm going to put on and if I'm going to say oh I put the tiller on and now I got to go back to the brush hog Oh, now I can need a tiller again. I try to limit all my chores now to what the implement is on and trying to get those taken care of within about a two month period. So I'm kind of curious if you have a routine out there that you use and uh, just let me know what it is. Maybe you don't have all the implements that I have. Maybe you have more and uh, maybe you have a specific routine. Maybe you're in a different climate where you're not worried about plowing snow or anything like that. A lot of people buy these tractors just to uh, cut grass and they have a couple, three acres. Maybe they're brush hogging most of the time with their tractor. Maybe they're using the uh, mid-mount mower on here. So let me know if you have a routine, if you can kind of relate what I'm talking about. Hopefully this video is worth it. Make you think, especially if you're a new tractor owner, how to hone your moves and not waste your time when you're switching out implements and realize, oh, I just put this on, but I need the other one again. So let's talk about your attachments that go up front and replace the loader bucket. Those are pretty much easy to change out. Um, I can go from the loader bucket to a set of forks to my brush crusher back to the loader bucket and do that all day long. It only takes a, about a minute per change. It's not very difficult if you line everything all up on a nice level driveway. It's pretty easy to just go up there, scoop something up, use it, dump it off, scoop up the next one, use it, dump it off. Um, sometimes I don't even set the pins, depending on what I'm doing, especially when it comes to the forks, because a lot of times I don't need uh, to worry about, I'm just, I just have pressure on the forks and it's going to keep that implement in place. I can use the forks really quick and then go dump them, put the loader bucket back on, then maybe I need to throw the pins back in, but up front is not a big deal. It's always in the back that turns out to be a big deal. So I thought I would just bring this to your attention. I'm sure all the tractor owners out there that are meticulous with their tractor already have some sort of routine. But I thought this would be something for you to think about, especially if you're a new tractor owner. And depending on how many implements you have and if you're gonna be getting more in the future, you might change your routine throughout the year. I appreciate everybody watching. I hope you enjoy and subscribe to these videos. Click on that little bell when you wanna know when a new one is coming out. And keep an eye on us. Take care, everybody.